Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh! Hey there guys, we need you here and welcome back to Let's Play Alan Wake. When last we met, we actually ran into some trouble. Um, lots of troubles actually. Is that guy gonna open the door? Oh shit, oh shit. Good evening, Alan. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'm calm. I get the message. Loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. Now, why don't you come with me? We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. Yeah, I guess. You know, I didn't this just corridor get is my for shit wrecked. Most of them aren't here right now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. Night this Springs. Way, Interesting. Interesting. No fancy smancy elevator. All these rooms are locked on that side. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. You go this way, Alan. I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying. But under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. It's all in your head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Unless we fight the fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. He's got a point. But I know that's not the way the game wants us to go. Nice sundial. Or are we just gonna watch ah, the vista? I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. I thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Now there was nothing but waves. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. This way, follow me. Hmm. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? or because you don't want to admit that you're not well. It's very natural for you to think of me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. After all, 
Hartman obviously loved his own voice. His words echoed madly inside my head. I, I dug my nails into the palms of my no. hands to stay you focused. You need to work with me. Once you accept that, we can begin the journey towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. What the hell? Come on, come on. Well, here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I do love to hunt. The great outdoors, man versus nature. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Scary, scary, scary. <laughs> Emerson. I'm a real bad dream, mister. You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night, that's for sure. Please, Emerson. Mr. Wake is confused enough as it is. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him, I'm happy to say. He works on video Elbow games. Strike. It's yeah. trash, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. No kidding. Well, no. I feel like I should go upstairs and grab that coffee. Excuse me, nurse. <laughs> Ma'am, excuse me. I see a coffee thermos up there that I would like. I'm just gonna go up there and grab it. Unless this is part of a level. Alan, please, this way. Damn it, I'm getting coffee, motherfucker. Can't sit here and be like, oh, I'm your therapist. No more coffee. <sighs> Another one of these things, eh? Someone scan that. Tell me what it takes you to. Take you to alanwake.com. Alanwake.spook.gov. Hartman had mentioned that the power had been acting up. Maybe that was the reason for the generator and the work light on the balcony. The generator hadn't been activated, and there was no key. Hmm. Uh, okay. This is a level, I swear. I'm gonna have to go back through this place, but in Come darkness. Alan, this way. Old people left and right. Excuse now, me. You might have noticed the typewriter in your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. Welcome to Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you a specialized help you need. However, please observe the following. Please ask friends and family to schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy and or periods of creativity. Also, please respect your fellow patients' need for privacy and personal space, especially when they're endangered or engaged. <laughs> engaged by their creative process. Be patient. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems that won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take time you need. Uh, bear in mind that you are voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Engagement therapy and its sister method, the flow, <laughs> work best when you're actively engaged in shaping them. If you have any concerns, please don't hesitate to voice them. I got the flow. My rheumatism is killing me. There's a storm coming. Oh! What a storm! I hope it wipes this place off the face of the earth. These guys? And these two are the Anderson brothers. Odin and Tor. They had a... How should I put this? A heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. No, that won't do. 
I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Don't you think? I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! Being ah. crazy's a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla! We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. What? My head was clearing up, or according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? <laughs> Zane could feel the poems taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. Okay. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> we have guy. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember, like... Okay, so... They're only in your head, and they're not there they when you wake up. Gotcha. Doc's got me looking after Wake here, but holler if they get too rowdy. I'll do that, Birch. Hey, Wake, why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, Wake. Oh, I know how to get to my room. Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's hard to think that there's a shadow inside my head. I can only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been for days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me. Using me to get the story at once, and the story will come true. Okay. Interesting. Oh, that's not my room. I told you, damn it, I know how to get to my room. I don't need help. Jesus. Mr. Wake. Are we gonna type? The white glare of the blank page in front of me hurt my eyes. My hands began to shake uncontrollably. Hey, Wake, you stay here. I'm gonna go see what's up. You just keep doing what you're doing. Be cool, okay? Chaos was all about, but it could be my only chance of getting out of here. Hartman kept talking, giving Barry the grand tour, clearly proud of the place. 
He went on and on about his hunting trophies, and Barry was impressed. But he was here on business. He raised his voice, cut through the monologue. Hey, Hartman, where's Al? Hartman stopped in mid-sentence, annoyed at the interruption. He nodded at the hulking orderly standing nearby. The man smiled and clapped a practiced hand on Barry's shoulder. Uh oh. It's my store. I'm taking it. So these old guys are going nuts down here. We're out of Sinclair looked back. Door, there wasn't a glove tap. The crazy old fart hit her hard. And if she was one of Hartman's yours, goons, Tom, she had it coming. I could get the key to the office wing from Sinclair. I had to get to Hartman's office. He had taken all my Come manuscript pages. That's where he'd be keeping it's them. Time to pay the piper. Hartman's office, eh? Maybe you could come out and beat our wrinkled. You said this was staff only, right? Oop. The photo on the wall caught my attention. In it, the clinic staff was standing outside the lodge. I knew the man next to Hartman. He was the kidnapper. Hartman had been playing me all along. Interesting. The markings on the tape said they were recordings Hartman had made at the sessions with his patients. I saw Alice's name on one of them. For a moment, I couldn't breathe right. Now, Mrs. Wake, can you tell me about Alan's problems? He's more and more out of control all the time. The parties, he's so angry all the time. He's getting violent. He's... Do you mean with you? No, not with me. No, never. I... Sometimes I almost wish Alan would take a swing at me, because at least that'd lead to a conversation he couldn't just march out of. But no. He just... Alan doesn't really sleep. And the work? Well, he's not writing. At all. He sits there for hours and just gets more and more frustrated. And I can't talk to him. Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Wake. What would you say to him if he'd listen? <sighs> I don't know. I want to say, I look at you, and it's not you, just some stranger who resembles you, looking out from behind your eyes, and I don't like that guy much, and now it's all gonna go to hell. But you don't ever say this. No, no, I've tried, but he's not listening, he's too deep in his own problems, always going on about something else, I'm so afraid I'm gonna lose him. We're not even talking anymore. He doesn't let me in anymore. He just keeps me in the dark. I'm so alone here, even when he's home. Please help me, doctor, because I'm at my wit's end. Well, if you can just get him here, I'll absolutely do my very best. Yeah, but doctor, you need to be careful with him. He's not just going to listen to you and cooperate. He's the most stubborn man I've ever met. Well, I'll be sure to bear that in mind. Hearing her voice, what she was saying made me happy and sick and guilty all at once. Worst of all, I recognized the words. The phone call from her. It had been a cut-up of this. Just a recording. Yeah. Huh. This doctor's kind of sketchy now. Ooh. Hartman wasn't happy. Maud could see it in his eyes. He quickly lowered his own. He had made a mess of it, and he knew it. The shame of failure was hard to bear. He hadn't expected Wake to say he needed more time, and he blurted out two days, less than Wake had asked for to show him who was in charge. But that wasn't part of Hartman's plan. Hmm. Methinks this doctor is becoming the main bad guy. Kinda. Hartman, do you hear me? I'm gonna sue your crazy quack ass to split! Barry. Seriously! Barry? About time! Barry, man, am I glad to see you. We need to get to Hartman's office. It's right next door. You okay? Yeah. I mean, no! The cops found me at Rose's trailer, but they didn't hassle me too much. I'm obviously a victim in this, and I demanded to be treated as such. Or else I'd sue their asses. Speaking of asses, that fed gave me a real hard time. But I had no clue where you were. That guy's crazy, Al. But he let me go, and then I get a call from Hartman that 
son of a bitch who tells me you're here and I should come pick you up, but when I got here, two goons clobbered me and stuck me in there. What's... what's with the cutout? I stole it from the diner to piss off Rose after what she did to us. That'll teach her. <laughs> yeah, that's a harsh punishment. Come on, pal, we gotta get going. God damn it. Barry, you're such a ding dong. Anyways, coffee thermos. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. We're stuck. We're stuck. Ah. We need to get to Hartman's office. All right. It's right next door. I rushed back. <laughs> These were all the pages I had already. And more. Alan, please. You're sliding back Shh, into the- Tell me one more lie and I'll shoot you in the face. Ah, well, it was worth a shot. Really, Wake, come on. Let's work together on this. You have no idea- Harvey, shut up! Barry, get out of here. I'll catch up with you. Get a car. Oh, Al, let's just- Go! Wake, listen to me. This is a mistake. Don't you see? Together we can create something absolutely wonderful with your ability and mine. happened holy Toledo I had to find a way out we also got manuscript pages apparently oh no we don't oh yeah we do Hartman followed the fall of Alan Wake with his binoculars when the writer hit the water he ordered Jack to take the boat to him the spot was easy to see in the dark even with all the extra lights in the boat the flare floated and kept burning even in the water Jack turned the radio louder as the engine sputtered. The music was rough and clanking, something the Anderson brothers would no doubt have enjoyed. But Hartman chose to ignore it. Wake was finally within his reach. Huh. What kind of ability is this doctor talking about? I don't have a flashlight. Which means I can't exactly do anything ah! Ah! against this stuff. Oh boy. Oh boy, click your butt off. Not going over there, hell no. Okay, not going that way either. I needed light to get the possessed bookshelves out of my way. I know exactly where to go. Ah! Yeah, I see it! Ugh. Come on. Come on. We did it. Nice. All right, got rid of these books. Flare, right? Is that a hint? Like, is that what I'm supposed to use? Because I'm not going to use it unless it's like last resort, you know? I guess it is. Um, those bookshelves are coming towards me. Another manuscript page. Read that. Hartman knew he was no creator. He had no ambitions on that front. And he certainly didn't want to end up like every artist he had worked with here. 
damaged in ways that were hard to describe, or worse. It was enough for Hartman to maintain creative control and provide direction, to be a producer. That was what most of these people were in need of anyway. Of course, suitable subjects were few and far in between. Man. Um, now I'm super curious about this doctor's intentions here. Oh, we got the achievement boob too. It's a car commercial. Of some kind. Oh. It's a... It's some kind of Japanese car commercial. Oh, Koi-chan, Tsumantan. Mustang Drift. Oh, man. 2010 MustangDrift.com. A Verizon commercial, too? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's calm down for two seconds and address the copyright that's happening right now. Was this authorized? Did Verizon sponsor this game? Let alone Mustang? Or did they just put this in and go like, oh yeah, by the way. That seems like a big legal black hole back there of an easter egg. Heck, am I not even an easter egg? Open the doors! That thing's gonna come flying at me, ain't it? Yay! <laughs> Can I open yet? No. Uh, if it's gonna keep on hitting the thing, is it gonna break? Oh, it kinda did. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh! <laughs> Fuck this, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out! Woo! Oh shit. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Now it's in a room with me. Oh! Right in the penis. Oh, I did it! I was like, I gotta ain't line that thing up. Oh, that was perfect. Mm. Hold on, is there manuscript pages around here? There's coffee. Oh, holy cow. That was pretty scary. Yeah, yeah, I know we gotta get going, but Alan wakes a big old fatty so he can't move very well. I found the car, but the gate's locked. You're gonna have to go through the hedge maze over there. Barry, I don't have a light. Take this, Al! Thanks. Oh, God! Look at the house, Al! Look out! Wow. Things are getting spooky. Holy cow, okay. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try. Um, hedge maze. Hedge maze? I know the hedge maze is on this side, but I was just looking for manuscript pages or anything. Man, a hedge maze, really? That's an awful idea. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again.